Paula Becker was born in Dresden, Germany in 1876. In the summer of 1897, after several years of art lessons at home in Berlin, she decided to spend a few weeks studying in Warp Suite. That following year, she returned to settle there permanently. The Warp Suite painters advocated a romanticized view of country life, which they considered an antidote to the horrors of urban industrialization. Paula responded deeply to the notion that a basically realistic subject could embody profound spiritual values, but she rejected the sentimental approach of her colleagues. Paula had been drawn to the excitement of the city, and after over a year of fruitful work in Warp Suite, she decided to move to Paris. Upon arriving to the French capital, Paula enrolled in the Académie Colerosi and was kept busy attempting to absorb a countless amount of unfamiliar influences. She soon recognized French art had great lessons to impart, but it would take the rest of her life to learn them. A flesh and blood romance soon interrupted her blossoming love affair with Paris. Having returned to Warpseed for the summer of 1900, she lingered there in order to be near her fiancé, Otto Matterson. Both Otto and Paula considered their union to be artistic, as well as physical in nature. After their wedding in May 1901, Paula was not expected to forsake art for her more ordinary wifely duties. As long as her paintings were made subordinate to her husband's, the marriage went well. However, after a year of painting practically hand in hand with Otto, Paula longed to expand her horizons. As much as she loved him, she had outgrown his example and needed also to go beyond the compass of Warp Suite. Between 1903 and 1905, Paula returned to Paris for several months, leaving Otto behind. With each painting, the strain between them grew greater, and finally in 1906, she left him. In so many ways, her husband had come between her and artistic fulfillment, by being too tame in his work and by maintaining his steadfast loyalty to the German countryside, avoiding any meaningful effort to join the larger world. She realized she was an artistic peacock, and he had to let her fly. Above all, however, and by her own admission, the problem was Paula's gradual realization that she could only give her whole heart to her art. Paula had less than a year of anxiety-laden freedom in Paris. She remained financially dependent on Otto and was plagued on all sides by pleas to return to him. Paula had almost no supporters in her decision to leave her husband, and in the end of 1906, she allowed her husband to join her in Paris. In the spring of 1907, she returned with him to Warp Suite, pregnant. Apparently, they were working on a bit more than painting. Twenty days after giving birth to a daughter, Madison Becker was dead, the victim of cardiac embolism. In the last two years of her life, Madison Becker made her boldest strides toward establishing her artistic identity. She opened herself completely to the possibilities presented by French art. On previous visits, she had come to terms with certain French formal precepts, simplifying and honing the contours of her drawings to a minimum of expressive line, but had remained timid in her use of color. Now influenced to some extent by Cézanne, Gauguin, and Van Gogh, she adopted a brighter palette. This change lent her formal solutions far greater tonal weight rendering some of her work nearly cubistic. Despite her cubistic tendencies, Modersen Becker's incorporation of French formal means was always balanced by her dramatic aesthetic ideas. Like Warp Suite artists, she continued to believe that art must function as a conveyor of pure humanistic values. For this reason, recognizable subject matter was always a requisite correlative to the experience she wanted to convey, rather than just a pretext for visual experimentation. Although she was one of the first artists in any land to promote an all-over textural treatment of the canvas, her goal was not to demonstrate an aesthetic theory, but to give her work transcendent spiritual presence. Her achievement, like that of Edvard Munch or Van Gogh, constitutes one of the isolated idiosyncratic landmarks along the road to early modernism. Paula Modersen Becker boldly challenged traditional representations of the female body in art. She was the first modern woman artist to paint herself nude, she also created the first self-portrait while pregnant in the history of art. Modersen Becker painted the life she was living as a woman and artist and led the way for generations of women artists. Although her life and career were tragically cut short at age 31, Paula Modersen Becker left her mark on the art world forever.